Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to take you through the process of building a wrist wrench and a multi-spinner out of cheap stuff you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever your hardware store is. Uh, what I've discovered in my career is that the tools that I use the most often and that have the best carryover are really simple and cheap to build yourself. Uh, I probably spent hundreds or a thousand dollars on arm wrestling implements and handles that I almost never use, but the ones that I use every day are the ones that <laughs> are simple enough that I can do them on my own. And sure, you can go out and buy wrist wrenches and buy multi-spinners, but if you want one that's the right length, the right diameter, and the right customization for you, here's how you can approach it yourself. Okay, first, let's talk material, what you need to get from the hardware store. It starts with basic PVC pipe, okay? You also want like a ratchet strap, okay? I like to use ratchet straps because they already have a hook attached to them, but you can also just get regular tubular nylon. They sell them in rolls that are like 50 or 100 feet long, and you can just tie a carabiner onto the end of it. Um, and then when you're building your wrist wrenches, it's a really good idea to have some sandpaper. And uh, I'm talking high grit, like 250, 300 grit. And you'll attach that to the PVC pipe with Gorilla Glue. Some people like to use grip tape instead of sandpaper. I've never done that, but I'm sure it works just fine. Okay, now the size of the PVC pipe matters depending on the type of tool you're going to use. If you want to build a wrist wrench, you can build them from quite small, inch and a half diameter. Or you can do two inches if you're going to do it mostly just for wrist isolation. Or you can build giant ones, which are three and a half inches or bigger. And that just depends on the use case. I mean, if you're going to have a really giant one, it's going to be hard to do any straight cupping exercises like this, but it's really good for vector work. Okay. Multi-spinners, I would advise you to keep them small, okay? The multi-spinner that I use the most is one and a half inches in diameter, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna build one for you today that's uh, about two and a quarter. And I wouldn't go any bigger than this, even if your hands are large, because this is starting to get to the size where it's difficult to control the multi-spinner and you're leaving a lot of uh, useful strength gains on the table if you're spending a whole bunch of time just trying to lock in the control, okay? So the size of your tool matters and the length, uh, it, it can vary. I mean, it can be longer or shorter, but to me, I think the best length tends to be about nine inches is, is, is good length. Uh, you know, you get much longer than that. It starts to interfere with some of the movements. Like if you have a foot long multi spinner or a foot long wrist wrench, you'll be hitting the table or you'll be hitting things without a complete range of motion. And if it's too short, you don't have a lot of room to wind up the strap. So it can be a bit of a problem if it's too short. So I target a nine inch length. And as it turns out, nine inches is about the size of the uh, piece of sandpaper. Okay, so when you wrap the sandpaper around it, it's nine inches wide. And uh, it just works out that you don't have to cut into the sandpaper at all. Okay, so when you're building a wrist wrench, the first thing you do is you get sandpaper on your PVC pipe, okay? Um, you just put plenty of Gorilla Glue, especially around the edges, but, but a ton of it in the middle too, uh, on your sandpaper. And you also put it on the pipe and you wrap it around the pipe and you try to get it tight and let it overlap a little bit, okay? You let it overlap there. And then once you have it wrapped on there, you start to tape it, okay? So you could put duct tape down the seam and you could put it along the edges and just make sure that the sandpaper stays tight to the PVC pipe because uh, if the thing, you know, if the thing moves or there's a gap there, it's going to mess it up a little better. And you want it to be a, a nice flush surface, okay? And then you just sit it down for a day. Let it cure. It takes about 24 hours for the Gorilla Glue to cure. It'll actually start to harden in about an hour, but a full cure takes about a day, okay? So you just do that, leave it for a day. And then next, um, you can do this in either order, okay? You can start with the drilling or you can start with the sawing, okay? But you get out your drill and you drill a hole in it, okay? So here you go, do this end. Okay, you just drill a hole in it. I mean, okay, that's a little closer than an inch, but you drill a hole in it about an inch from the end, okay? Uh, you do that on the other side. mess but but even with the sandpaper already on there it's not too bad okay you drill it an inch from each end uh, or so I mean if it's less than an inch it, it's really no big deal but you don't want it to be so thin that you got no uh, no support on the end okay so you 
you drill your holes in there because that's where your ratchet strap is going to go. You see mine aren't even lined up perfectly, but that's okay. Then you cut it, okay? You can use power tools to cut it. You can use a sawzall, which is what I do. There are actually purpose-made PVC saws that are out there, but I just use the sawzall because um, you can use a sawzall for just about anything. <laughs> Nothing fancy. I don't even put it in a, in a table vice or on a bench because it only takes about a minute to cut. This is a two inch diameter wrench. Now, what you are going to notice is that no matter what tool you use, your cut is going to be a little bit uneven. There's going to be a slope to it. And it's also going to be a little bit rough. Okay. So don't worry about that. The one problem with using a handsaw is you'll get a little bit stuck, but it's not so bad. You just keep the cut going, and that last little nub, you can just kind of break it off. Okay, so like I was saying, uh, the, the cut's going to be a little bit rough, right? You're not going to want to nick yourself on this, and you'd like it to be a little smoother, so take some lower grit sandpaper, like 60 and just give it a quick, quick rub down. Smooth it out, get all that crap off of there so that you can run your hand on it without nicking yourself, okay? So, there you go. Now you have a nice nine inch long wrench tool with a hole at each end, okay? Okay, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to attach the strap to your wrist wrench. Now, if you're like me and you like to use the ratchet straps that already have the hook on them, you can do both the multi-spinner and the wrist wrench from one strap, okay? You have the hook at one end and no hook at the other end. So all you got to do is cut the strap and you can use the hooked end for a multi-spinner and you can use the non-hooked end for your wrist wrench, okay? So since I've drilled the holes... And they don't have to be even. It really doesn't matter. It's nice to be even, but whatever. And you just fold up that, that strap, okay? If you really struggle, if, if you got kind of a frayed end like this, and you really struggle to get it through that hole, uh, you can push it through with a drill bit, you know, uh, a smaller one than the size you use to make the hole. I make the holes with about 5 sixteenths of an inch. It's, it's big enough. Um, and yet... You pass the strap through so there's a lot of a lot of room so you, you can get your hands around the tool. And you just tie a knot in it and make sure you pull mostly the long end so that the knot stays close to the very end of the strap, okay? So you just tie one knot, just a regular old knot, nothing special, and then you tie another one. And you tie it basically right up against that other one, okay? So that's just two ordinary knots, nothing fancy. And you don't have to have them super tight when you do this. You just have to make sure that they don't slip off the end. And then you go ahead and pull on that long end, and the, the wall of the spinner will actually help tighten the knot, okay? And you just push it in there, and it's really simple, okay? Do the same thing on the other side. Really easy. Um, pass it on through, and like I said... Uh, if it's you know if the hole is too small, it can be really difficult. It's tempting to use a small hole because you're worried about the thing slipping out. But the knots on these things are are big. I mean, you know, you could probably do uh, like three quarters of an inch hole or something like that, and you could tie the knot, and it would still not come out. So so don't worry about the thing coming out and getting pulled through when you're using even extraordinarily heavy weights. Okay, you just quickly tie two knots there, give it a a little tug. And then a big pull once you're in here, and the wrist wrench is done, okay? Now, multi-spinner, I said I was going to build this for you today. Uh, I already have the hole drilled in it, and I have the cut strap, so piece of cake. It takes like two minutes to build 
a multi-spinner. You just do the exact same thing. You tie a knot. I like to keep the lengths about the same for the wrist wrench and the multi-spinner in terms of the PVC length. I, use, I like to keep it to about nine inches. And that's the longest part of this job when you're doing the multi-spinner is cutting your PVC pipe to that length, okay? Uh, this is actually a little under nine. This is about eight and a half inches, but whatever. I, you know, the, the hardest part is spending two minutes cutting it to length. But drilling the hole and tying the knot takes like 30 seconds. So there you go. Multi-spinner, wrist wrench. Obviously, these are different sizes, but I use the same strap for them both. Okay, so that's it, guys. Hopefully, uh, after watching this video, you can build your own tools. You can pick different sizes and experiment, and you can have five different sizes of everything for cheap and uh, find what works best for you when you're doing your different types of exercises. So that's it. See you next time.